Hello, this is Satya. I'm the coordinator for this event today. I'm a change maker at INQ. Uh, welcome all and good morning. Hope everybody is having a very good day today. Uh, today's session is Architecting Digital Transformation by Mr. Srikant Thaluri. So before we start off with this session, let me give you a brief introduction about our host or the presenter. Mr. Srikant Thaluri is the founder and director at Incube Digital Foundation, uh, which is mainly headquartered at uh, Hyderabad, Telangana. He is a decade-long uh, experienced transformation consultant who has done large-scale digital transformation projects for top global corporations and governments. In his journey, he has met uh, many like uh, few like-minded people, and he has partnered a journey along with them and uh, founded INQ, the Digital Foundation, which is a non-profit digital value ecosystem that is solidly working towards realizing India 4.0 initiative. So, so as far as uh, today's topic is about, it is about architecting digital transformation. So why are we talking about architecting digital transformation? Uh, just to give you a small uh, introduction about that, the forecast, the study forecasting says trillions of dollars in digital economy will be uh, generated in the next decade. And upskilling the work phase, workforce, uh, which encompasses the digital India as enablers and practitioners alone, uh, is not the only solution. So, with this prospectus, what we feel is the need of our is to generate economy creators. So to generate econo economy creators, we need problem solving solutions or products uh, that could uh, generate economy and create digital India in the next decade. So as part of uh, Digital India Initiative, we have started this uh, uh, free workshops. Uh, so I'm gonna hand over to the presenter now, who's gonna start off with the presentation. So welcome, Srika. Uh, thank you, Sathya. Uh, I hope I'm visible and audible. Uh, yes, Srikant, you are visible and you are good to go. Start off with the presentation. Yeah. Uh, cool. yeah. I'm going to go on mute uh, for any uh, communication uh, uh, to all the participants in the session. Uh, just uh, send a message. Uh, so I am the co-coordinator in the list. If you see on your right, just uh, leave a message to me or you can leave the message uh, personally to me so that no, that will not uh, be sent across to everybody. And then I could answer your questions. Okay. All right. So can, uh, yeah, just go off and I'm going to go on mute. Okay. Sure, Satya. Uh, thank you, uh, Satya. And uh, hello, everyone. A very good morning to everyone attending the session. So today's topic is primarily uh, focused on uh, architecting digital transformation. And uh, this is going to be a web workshop. Yes, it's going to be interactive and uh, uh, like not, not a typical speaker session where we just speak and people just listen and leave. We want participation from every uh, attendee. And uh, irrespective of your expertise or experience in this transformation space. Uh, the whole pu purpose of 
getting together here uh, is basically to uh, start off understanding you know the digital transformation initiatives what is this landscape all about and why are we here today as well as why are all the corporates governments the whole world you know is looking for this transformation and uh, i hope uh, everyone are first of all doing good and safe in the covid 19 situation and uh, this current global lockdown and pandemic is definitely causing a lot of uh, trouble in terms of uh, you know uh, work commuting in terms of economy in terms of uh, you know uh, the employment prospects the educational aspects uh, you know and, and and this is not going to be a permanent situation i'm sure you know we'll overcome it very soon but the moment we bounce back to our normal sea and considering the current state of the world uh, there might be immediate uh, slowdown uh, in terms of the work efforts and other things but i'm sure in the next 3 to 6 months uh, we'll have a lot of digital initiatives from the governments to begin with and uh, even in the the verticals like pharma healthcare where there will be primary focus in terms of you know there's uh, drug discoveries in terms of pandemic control in terms of the uh, information uh, procurement insights you know, preparing the world awareness uh, you know there are a lot of areas where there will be heavy 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 uh, investments and work uh, and, when, and most of them will be in the digital lines and the situation how it is being handled today using all the social media all the digital means the insights you know, are the kind of awareness and mindset which is being created is amazing and there is long way to go this is just the beginning so uh, we'll just start off with quick introduction about myself satya has given a decent uh, introduction about my profile and I, I just want to just give you a high level overview yes i've been involved uh uh in, in the digital transfer efforts over the last one decade and uh, work for large scale clientele uh, corporate as well as government uh, was involved in the digital transformation initiatives uh, at various scopes uh, infrastructure level and then the application infrastructure migrations as such and this is where i gained a lot of experience as well as exposure to how the world is going to shape up how the corporate world how the uh, employment prospects what kind of skills what kind of opportunities what kind of job roles are, are being created and where uh, you know things are heading and how we should really prepare and that is what led me towards establishing in queue with the like minded uh, individuals uh, so we are today a group of 40 plus volunteers and group from across the globe and we're working towards uh, various initiatives uh, awareness to begin with through digital talks and uh, creating mindset digital mindset across the globe uh, you know through digital talks and ai journal and today's workshop as well is part of uh, you know digital talks initiative and we're taking it on the web or online mode considering the covid lockdown and you know to make sure we are giving back to the society in terms of you know uh, bringing the awareness and you know preparing them for the immediate future and the skills works and ventures are the other areas where <coughs> in cube focuses and uh, we have come up with something like wherein it's more like learning through action rather than just you know theory and a, a very tangential practicality uh, based education it is experiential but to the core uh, so school of innovation deals with it and where uh, people get involved in the projects at the venture school and then they derive uh, you know the skills as well as the competency out of the program and dx labs is our uh, think tank and the uh, the super body i should say uh, which focuses on internal as well as external think tank activity strategy and uh, you know coming up with whatever the digital transformation and disruptive models so this is about in cube myself and uh, 
as I mentioned, we are today around like 50 plus yeah, global industry experts uh, involved on a voluntary mode. Uh, we're happy for their contributions and we'll see a lot of such sessions even coming uh, from our <clears throat> voluntary network who will be uh, delivering few talks, few workshops online, free as well as few paid, of course, uh, in order to, you know, make sure we're engaged, we're upskilled and we're, you know, learning our, I mean, keeping our learning curve in the positive direction. So today's scope of, is basically to understand what is digital transformation. Understand the landscape, and then you know start preparing towards this digital transformation world. Okay, this is not new, but this is growing. The last one decade was more of experimental. Last corporates, yes, they did a lot of experimentation where I was involved, and you know a sector of the industry was involved, and that was hardly ten percent, and now. 90% of the companies going forward are looking to transform their models, their operating models as a whole completely. And how, why, what? Now, we'll, we'll understand those uh, aspects first. It's required to reach there at a corporate level or the leadership. Is really required. And somebody who's just entering the industry, you know, it was who, who come in the passion zone, uh, coming from the colleges, universities, and with hardly like zero to five years of experience. Uh, what kind of preparation is required for them? And we will go through a small exercise here to begin with. And this is going to be a series of uh, workshops, a weekly. That is how we are planning. And there will be continuity. We will be working on multiple such topics and we'll be taking it forward. We'll be hosting these sessions uh, online throughout YouTube and other social media channels. And very, those who have missed the sessions and those who already attended and who just want to go through, you know, will have access to this content. And uh, so let's start off with uh, and the digital transformation landscape as a whole. So before we begin this, okay, I just want to test the baseline of all the participants here and uh, we'll just go through a quick quiz, all right? I, I'm gonna post you this link, okay, in the chat window. Just take, I mean, it shouldn't take more than like five to 10 minutes for everyone and uh, uh, it should be, straightforward and this is irrespective of baseline if you are not aware you can just select the not applicable action or none or not sure you know we have given those options so i think we can begin this now and uh, i hope everybody has got uh, your the url in the chat window you can do it uh, from the Zoom controls chat window and just quickly open this form, a Google form and uh, take a quiz. Now you can ping back to me on this, you know, once we... So, away of the quiz. To our, that's, that's good responses, guys. So I do understand the baseline, okay, what kind of crowd we have. And uh, based on the quiz responses, uh, you know, that we have diverse group of participants. We do have, uh, uh, you know, people who already know about digital transformation landscape, which is good, and who already attended a few trainings or, you know, the skill development initiatives, which is good. So I do expect a decent understanding of the scope. And uh, for them, for those who are actually 
uh, involved and who understand. I think this is more like an introductory session or a, take it as more of a, uh, a review session. But for those who never did, I think this will be more informative and uh, your participation is going to give you guys real good uh, uh, outcomes in terms of preparing for the future. Okay, so, so what is digital? You know, is it something new or is it something that we are just uh, at, at the inception stage? Uh, you, you can you can type your responses in the chat window. So I, as I mentioned, this is more of an interactive session. So we will be uh, having more uh, such questions and, you know, so I want, so we will be uh, having more uh, such questions and, you know, so I want, since, you know, we cannot have a voice-based communication throughout the session with everyone. Uh, so I just want you guys, everyone, uh, all the participants to use uh, chat window to just print your responses. I can see them and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go accordingly. So what what is, you know, this digital? Is it something new or did it exist before? Why are we so obsessed with the digital on the digital transformation now did, did we is it something out of the world or so so how how do we take this uh, one All right, good uh, responses. So basically, you know, the digital thing, what we are referring today is there are all these sensors, networks, embedded systems, the business analytics, the most powerful tools which have emerged uh, in the recent past and artificial intelligence, a very interesting thing, uh, of course. And... Uh, Machine learning, cloud computing, the robotics, drones, uh, you know, the new presentation layers, augmented reality, virtual reality, and the mixed reality zones. You know, all these, the new wave of technology elements, the frameworks, tools, solutions together. Uh, this is something new. This is something emerging in the last one decade. Okay, we did have information technology communication technology uh, you know weaving our business experiences in the last three four decades you know starting with the mainframes and then the client server technologies enabling the companies and you know all the workflows uh, the applications business applications at all primarily the focus was more at the corporate level government level because they were expensive they were you know there, there was not enough skills the skill scarcity to enable this was uh, huge then and eventually last two three decades now we have millions of workforce are working in this direction and there is already you know a huge footprint of digitization which happened in the last two decades for sure globally but how are we going to deal now and going forward, you know, with the advent of these new technologies, sensors, you know, the networks, whatever we see on the screen now, you know, the combinational use of these and artificial intelligence is again, it's computer science 2.0 to me, but the cognitive abilities, you know, where decision making is driven by machines rather than humans, you know, it's at various stages. So last two decades, we have seen more of no color automation, wherein uh, the information technologies based automation or the digitization was more focused at the works, automating the works done at the no color zone or at the blue color zone in the industry with the CNC machines or with the, uh, you know, the workflows, the banking applications with the office uh, communications. Uh, the collaboration and communication tools, your CRM, 
tools, your you know the ERP tools. All these were more like you know within the organization, whatever you know job which was done at the no color zone and the blue color zone, orchestrating communication uh, effectiveness, quickness. These were more mostly uh, you know the efforts, I should say, and uh, content as well as the work records, storage and retrieval. You know all those content management systems and all these. This is where the focus was more. But this is more of a ground level, or a, I would say, you know, when it compared to a, a real estate. Okay, the digital estate has got its foundation and ground floor laid very concretely, and now over this, we are in the process of building a new floor altogether uh, with the new wave of technologies. So. How this is going to change or, you know, uh, change the landscape of the world is something very interesting. And in the last 15 years of these, uh, you know, experimental usage, we have seen models like, uh, you know, Uber popping out, Facebook uh, and uh, Netflix affecting, you know, completely changing the landscape of entertainment industry, video libraries, CDs too, online streaming, YouTube, where today we have the power of uploading anything, our personal content, entertainment content, everything, you know, at the tip of, uh, you know, our fingers. And uh, you know, Office 365, the productivity suits uh, from <clears throat> the brands like Microsoft and all Fitbit, most of those use for the healthcare, uh, aspects, you know, these are you know models for, and Amazon, you know, you know, which simplified our day-to-day -day life in a lot of ways, and even for the corporate world with its Amazon Web Services and other things in uh, services, Azure, Microsoft's uh, cloud offering, uh, which you know is today uh, emerging as a market leader again in terms of uh, hosting services for. The corporates. Uh, along with Amazon. And we've seen the models like Zoomcar, you know, uh, we've seen models like Oyo coming into picture. They all operated and they all actually, you know, changed the landscape of their respective verticals. The Tesla automobile industry is completely. Uh, revamped or redefined. Uh, you know, YouTube, Netflix have redefined the entertainment industry. Uh, Practo has, you know, has made our lives easy in order to reach out to doctors in their appointments, you know. And of course, Uber, it's almost like every single individual, you know, uh, across the globe, at least, you know, 100 plus countries are, are using this particular service. So, you know, these are all like, you know, in, in the technical or the technology jargon, you know, if we define them to the models, they're all like, you know, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, you know, this AI and IoT driven models. So the last 10 or 15 years, there was a lot of experimentation. Of course, hundreds and thousands of startups and large corporates tried uh, and tested these uh, digital transformation models the new wave of models, a lot of them succeeded and a lot of them failed, you know, and now as this process was going, you know, the fundamental raw material, you know, the, 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 whatever the technology frameworks and all, you know, they were evolved and today they're all abundantly available at no cost with a lot of open source and, you know, the SaaS infrastructure services, you know, they're all like, available at, at, you know, marginal cost compared to, you know, what uh, it was the last decade or even before that. So even for the startup community, even for the experimental, uh, uh, experimental initiatives, the cost involved in, you know, initiating these transformation initiatives and all is very, very, very marginal now you know, compared to uh, earlier. So, so now coming back to our, uh, you know, discussion. So what enables these digital businesses and how, how you know, we are trying to establish organizations. So, you know, like talking about the architectural aspects, like uh, 
process automation and autonomy is the primary focus across across all the business units of the organization you know be it the r and d be it the innovation zone be it the operational zone or be it with the customer experiences customer interactions wherever possible we have seen process automation the last one two decades of course but now this process automation is coupled or is going to be coupled with autonomy that is the cognitive uh, computing part wherein machine drives the decision making part predictive part you know where the white collar work is going to be embedded into the business process and in through the digital means and this is you know served across those you know uh, their companies their businesses their uh, you know uh, the complete footprint uh, you know with the advent of this uh, cloud or with the adoption of cloud technologies so so this is where you know the uh, the landscape is now you know heading to and uh, how do we prepare here is now a uh, big question so i want everyone to probably think about uh, at least two or three such models you know apart from those listed in you know in this part of the screen you, you can you come up with those uh, any any two or three such models which really change the landscape or so any any such efforts in your stream as such uh, which actually uh you know are creating a new wave uh of transformation in your respective industries or verticals as such i mean you can use the chat window for the same now we will take like two or three minutes for this Just print two or three companies or you know, brands whom you think uh, you know are into such initiatives who have already achieved such a transformation or in any such companies who are already working on such uh, transformation initiatives as such, which are going to change the landscape. Print, print the brands which are not uh, discussed by us earlier in the slides. There are hundreds. You know, we can't fit everything into the slides, so we just we just want to. Yeah, I do see Uber, Tesla repeating again. So, All right, that's one interesting response. Bill Pack, an online pharmacy, okay, which disrupted the retail pharmacy in the U.S., which is good. Okay. Yeah, we do have one more minute in case if you want to come up with any such, uh, okay. Big basket in India, yes. Big online supermarket. Yeah, they don't operate in a traditional model where, you know, we see brick and mortar uh, stores, people walking into their stores. No, that's not the case. It's everything online. But, you know, they, it's more of a hybrid model, I should say, than uh they completely own the value chain and uh, of course they uh raise uh, scope for a lot of innovation uh in terms of the supply chain management in terms of procurement to delivery logistics uh, they're doing a real good job and currently in the covid situation yes all right in a sense good and yeah. this is one uh it's, it's a startup, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, they're working on complete tech or the transformative workforce uh, 
orchestration globally uh, in a boundaryless fashion. Yes, that's one model. Reliance, yes, they're into geo is one disruptive solution that came with uh, building an ecosystem around geo and you know, geo services. Yes. So I think, yes, I, that was good. And, uh, you know, how, how uh, do we prepare here? So the preparation here is at three levels. One is, of course, you know, first it starts with the leadership. They need to realize the value of digital transformation and uh, where this can lead or where this can take their respective organizations to. So that is very important. You know, unless there is a realization, unless there is a mindset creation, you know, there is no scope for people to really adopt uh, digital transformation initiatives in the current existing businesses. So that mindset, you know, the creating the right mindset is very important. That is where we begin. And it definitely happens. It begins, you know, uh, the leadership or the executive leadership. And I think a lot of companies are now uh, realize this value and all the CXO community or the leadership community are getting engaged in uh, understanding the create you know the the value of digital transformation understanding the landscape get acquainted with a new wave of technologies and the solution that can be derived with the usage of or adoption of these technologies into their organizations so this is very important and after this you know it, it, the creating the mindset and the leader uh, in today's participant, we see most of them are in the mid-level experience and, you know, the programmers, architects, solution designers and all. But architecture starts at the enterprise scale. That's how the business is laid out. And that a business architecture ultimately translates into the technology architecture. That is what is the job of those subject matter experts who translate a business need into uh, you know, a technology-based solution. So first you know need last person you know that would be the least experience in the organization and there should be a lot of corporate storytelling a lot of internal campaigns within the organization to help your staff, your colleagues, your employees, your partners, uh, you know, understand this need of digital transformation. It's not just your employees, the partner companies, your ecosystem, uh, you know, especially for the manufacturing companies, especially for the, uh, you know, uh, the retail and, you know, other companies, I mean, verticals who are, transforming we need there is a need for creating this mindset across your ecosystem so companies if they need to survive if they need to weave themselves into a new dna altogether it's not just their internal structure it's also their whole ecosystem has to be made aware of this there is a lot of uh, such initiatives happening even for the governments to and you know realize this need but again when it comes from the core organization the core orchestrator of the supply chain it is mandated so the core orchestrators have to invest in creating this mindset through various awareness programs and through various initiatives and then once this mindset is prepared then okay all the employees all the workforce Okay, across the hierarchy, there is okay uh, acceptance for the change. Transformation is change. Okay, and architecture is common sense, the very basics. Now, how we do it? Okay, okay, how 
architecting you now the digital transformation is you know how are we planning to do this you now the digital change or the change to our business as a whole it's right forward and you know how, that how begins with first you know awareness mindset okay now we have to change okay now this is where we should head and yes there is an acceptance and when there is acceptance that is when every individual will resort to upgrading themselves to understand the intrinsics of these technology elements and how they can be weaved towards a business solution straight forward so the competency building is the next step towards you know achieving this change or the large scale change that an organization is anticipating and competency building or the skills it starts with the skill development and you know first gaining those skills and the combinational usage of these skills to build a solution will lead to a competency until and unless you know the workforce or the employees of your organizations have the ability to translate their technology or management or business skills or their innovation skills into a solution all put together there is no score for success and along with this you know experimentation mindset is another key factor that has to be established so what is the experimentation culture why do we need experimentation culture and all because last two or three or decades mostly we were involved in operational consulting or the operational you know the ground floor or the foundation that was laid out it was more like you know automating the existing workforce and that was again a digital transformation 1.0 i should say uh, and and today when we are talking about a building or redefining or reconstructing a new organization of the existing large scale organization corporate or a mid scale organization at all so we need to understand this is not straight forward there is already you know a lot of business units operating there are a lot of uh, you know and most of them are multinational corporations and they deal with supply chain you know the orchestrators across the world and they you know there is the people the process and the you know the regulatory aspects so the, the, this is where already you know things are in place structured and uh, you know it, it's it's very uh, organized as of today but when we are thinking about adding more value to our business and increasing the profitability and the space at which our business can really orchestrate and their increase in the scale and scope of the business that is where we are you know thinking of adopting these new technologies but we don't anticipate a result straight forward we cannot really think of adding solutions uh, straight forward uh, you know just because we have those technology access and all now it all begins again at a different scope you know just because we know a new wave of technology so big data we mastered uh, you know our, our staff has mastered big data blockchain or you know the ai frameworks and all uh, you know it, it doesn't start there we need to first understand you know what what are the factors that we need to know in order to you know uh, proceed or in order to kick off the digital transformation initiatives at what of a scope could be at a or complete a venture level or a company level transformation or a business unit or you know a sub scope you know uh, we need to identify where to begin you know we need to know you know how to where to start or how to start off and all so what are those factors that we have to know uh, in order to take these uh, things forward is something you know where we'll focus now we'll discuss these aspects on a high level so digital business models and platforms first yes we need to understand as i mentioned the landscape what are these digital business models 
the platforms. So how are the platform models are different from the linear models or the network-based models or the platform-based models, how they are different from the linear operating models, okay? And most of the organizations which were established in the last three, four decades or even you know, in the last hundred years and all, they have this linear operating structure. So what is this linear operating structure? Everything is controlled by the organization and you know, it, it all flows from one department to other. You know, it's not like, and most of the departments But they, they are core orchestrators. They don't own the assets. They don't own every single uh, element or every single uh, offering. Okay. They aggregate the players from the market and they orchestrate. So how is this different from that? You know, do we have to own end-to-end -end, uh, value chain or do we have to operate as a vertically integrated model or can we really transform into a and platform-based model. This is something which we have to understand. Is the network-based model or the platform-based model apt for our business model? Can we really, uh, you know, move? Can or can everything be transformed, or is it just few uh, areas or few business units which have which can be transformed in a partial scope or a complete scope? You know, these are something which people have to understand. And for that, yes, we have to go with the due diligence effort a complete understanding uh, you know reverse engineering or you know mapping the landscape of the existing business first yes of the business architecture as a whole and then what percentage of that business organization is driven by the digital technologies or the digital footprint and identify those departments identify those uh, you know, whatever the scope of digitization that has happened in the organization, the assets uh, which are in use, uh, you know, all these aspects. Then, once we identify them, you know, there will be strategic efforts, okay, trying to map, okay, can we really, uh, you know, the digital transformation roadmap effort can be kicked off, wherein, yes, there will be a lot of strategic discussions between, uh, you know, the leadership, of course, uh, where, uh, you know, okay, can we transform this into a network-based model? Can we really, you know, come up with this kind of a model? No, the, the prerequisites are first understanding the model, you know, the platforms, different models. And then you understand your business as a whole, map it. Then in that, identify those areas where uh, the transformation can be experimented can be experimented again you know i want to iterate this word it's not that you know initiated or achieved you have to experiment it is not going to be a straightforward thing and you should be ready for that experimentation that is where we were discussing about the experimental mindset and once we have the roadmap laid out okay we identify those initial kickoff uh, places okay this is okay this is where we can actually do you know then we can start off with, you know, laying out the exit strategies from those legacy uh, applications or the business units as a whole. Okay, this is where we can begin. Now, these departments can be completely ignored or transformed partially. Okay, we start off the efforts there. And what kind of costing and budgeting is really getting into these efforts? Okay, and uh, is it something feasible? Can we uh, afford this uh, experimentation? Yes or no? Okay. And then, you know, once the budgeting is given, as we kick off with the proof of concepts and prototyping.
efforts and all of this. We first try to understand the business models. We then try to understand the markets, the regulatory aspects, all those things. This is all the entrepreneurial frameworks or the skills which is required. And then the management skills, of course, you know, what the, the policies or the business model, how it is achieved is definitely through some business processes. And these business processes, what all in the due diligence, we'll identify, okay, what all business processes are we having? How are we operating? This is the you know, operation uh, model or modus operandi. And okay, this is where the digital footprint is today. No, and all these business processes, how are they digitized? We we get the current state of the organization, how the innovation has happened, how the product design and development has happened to enable these business processes, which are in turn running the business as a whole. And what kind of technology has actually enabled this company or businesses as a whole? So together, you know, the technology, innovation, management, and entrepreneurship skill, T-I-M-E. So it's a combination of the existing businesses as well as the future business models are a combination of all these aspects. And for somebody who has to work or who is getting involved in the digital transformation efforts in the lab, scenario or in the experimental scenario or in the prototyping scenario could be the leadership in the hierarchy could be the subject matter experts or even those who just you know are entering they need to understand all the four elements the entrepreneurial elements the management uh, aspects the innovation aspects and technology aspects depending on their scope leadership in order to first enable this and the subject matter experts in order to architect this and orchestrate this effort and those you know those uh, you know those who are in the hierarchy where you know mostly it's the technology based efforts they need to understand the language or the purpose of the whole effort which is driven in the hierarchy so if they don't understand what the business wants to achieve there's no point that people can really uh, contribute or you know deliver the results in terms of giving solutions to the trans in terms of the transform uh, transformed models so time competency is very 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 important in order to be a successful transformational architect or a consultant or uh, you know a, a, a workforce to become a successful workforce in this space and this is where incube digital foundation and its school of innovation is focusing on programs where people are getting hands-on experience that is the venture-based learning where you no know, action based you get involved in such projects the real world projects with our clientele with the startup community or with whoever you know uh, or internal uh, initiatives uh, from the industry outsource problems outsource from the industry as some or as well as few uh, which are designed by in and wherein yes the expert community, the leadership community, as well as the technology workforce, okay, or the passion or the inexperienced pool, or you know, with minimal experience, you know, they can get into these programs and gain this time competency. All right, how uh, you get to know or understand this, you know, with all these efforts, you know, across all the efforts, you know, how how we can really come up you know this is not something transformative skills or the competency is not something which you can just uh, listen to a talk and uh, just understand you know you have to really practice you have to really put things into action uh, and it comes out of experimentation as i said and there is a very high need uh large scale need in fact uh, for this or for such experimental grounds for people uh, for the work of skills and competency in order to help their companies propel through the digital transformation initiatives and this is where uh, you know uh, in cube is uh, working towards the awareness creating the mindset 
you know, propagating the skills uh, through works and you know, ultimately the venture. So, and uh, this is uh, the ultimately you know the goal where we are trying to uh, achieve, you know, uh, and supply or create those venture creators and orchestrators, as Satya has mentioned in the beginning. Uh, you know, the large scale venture creators and orchestrators in the existing corporate world as well as the new uh, corporate world or the startups as we say but to us it's more of ventures okay the startup is a very referential term even within the corporates every new project or every new transformational project is a startup internally so it's a referential term for the corporate world but yes for the external world startup is more of a fancy term in terms of a new company altogether but again you know, wherever, whichever scope you're planning to uh, go work or create your own uh, thing. And even there's a large scale need for such talent pool uh, to all the organizations. So every single organization or individual or a professional government should understand this need and promote such uh, experimental grounds for them to play around. And this this is where you know we started off with the series architecting digital transformation, and it begins transformation begins with workforce. This is the mantra which we have been propagating for a while. Yes, because all the stories are good on paper to discuss, but to translate into reality, it is the brains who sit and who work and who actually reconstruct these vehicles of the companies as a whole so unless there is a transformation at the workforce level there is no scope for any of the transformation uh, roadmaps to really become a, a, you know to be realized into a, a reality and you know get the return on investments from any organization so architecting uh, these transformations begins with creating the right mindset awareness and then skills and information that we wanted to share here uh, and we this, can uh, work when as we promote venture-based learning yes we want to give you all an activity in this workshop you can draft a scenario of a digital transformation within your organization or within your own vertical something out of your mind uh, you know we're not expecting you to draft your business intrinsics and the confidential things here uh, that is not the purpose something out of your understanding your experiences or something that you know it might that you might think okay this could be enable transformation you know at a smaller scope at an organization level or completely a new business model so draft a scenario, okay, and you can you can put it on a paper and uh, you know on a word file or a PDF file, uh, preferred PDF. Yes, uh, you can share it with dxlabs at goincube.com uh, once you are done drafting it, and uh, we will review each of your response. So and based on your inputs, we will understand your experience of what transformation models and all and those who really want to participate uh, we will you know accommodate them into our internship programs consultant as an intern consultant and even at a leadership uh, scope depending on the exposure uh, you have so your your work in this exercise is going to be uh, you know the the decision making uh, tool or an element for us uh, to understand, okay, this is where you guys fit, and we can definitely offer you some good uh, opportunities. And those who wish to definitely uh, participate in our programs, we do have certifications and you know workshops and other uh, things on the product design, digital transformation initiatives, and all. You can go through our website www.coincube.com and you can get more details and you can get enrolled in those paid programs as well. Uh, so I think we are good to go with the. Uh, exercise now and uh, if you have any questions shoot them uh, in the chat window I'll be happy to assist you during this workshop I mean, during the effort any any questions uh, 
typing it in the chat window uh, to everyone and we'll address uh, so it might help the participant community here. So it begins now, your report time begins now. So, right, so I think uh, it was good 30 minute session of uh, working and uh, yeah, we are waiting for your responses, uh, guys, and any, any quick question, answer, uh, you know, question and answers, you know, we can, we can go with the QA session now, or you can shoot your questions in the chat window again, and we'll take it from there. I do have a question from one of the participants, how to deal with the resistance in an industry, like an industry with no connected, uh, where there is no connection to the digital for during the digital transformation. So I, I do get your question. Yes, of course, this is, uh, this friction exists in a lot of organizations. This is where, you know, where our first point when we were referring to, uh, we were talking or we were, you know, talking about creating the mindset Okay, uh, so the top leadership of the companies should create the mindset among the you know, leadership and across the organization, management layers and all that. And they need to invest on, you know, such workshops to begin with. And uh, where will they really understand the need? You know, how their competitors are emerging, how, you know, the rest of the market is really more they should adopt and embrace new technology based on the digital based models okay and how it is going to benefit their existence of course and then growth and if you don't exist then there is no point of uh, you know discussing about the growth so how how these uh, digital uh, models are you know is going to really help their organizations in terms of existence this is something a big friction area because a lot of uh, those traditional organizations or the pipeline organizations established companies they see a lot of revenues they do see you know in the comfort zone so definitely they don't uh, see the need of uh, change immediate change but it doesn't take more than few years for them to perish. Okay, and this is proved in the last 10 or 15 years. You know, Blockbuster was a video rental uh, company, a large scale company in US. And when Netflix were their competitor, they both were operating in the same model, but when Netflix adopted the digital model today, whatever the Netflix we are seeing, Blockbuster is no more existing, you know. It's, it's, and they had to go bankrupt in no time because they did not they were resistant to this change and a lot of such organizations lot of such companies you know those electronic brands the retail brands uh and all like today we see walmart is pretty much operating in the lines of uh, amazon and uh because they they were more like you know focused on the store-based sales a lot of technology of course but they didn't have a marketplace kind of a thing. And today they are offering such a uh, thing, you know, when Amazon arrived. Then big, no immune to such risk. And, you know, through such, to by attending such workshops and, you know, the informative sessions and all, right? This is where, uh, you know, the, the, the change, the mindset comes first, and then the rest of the things will go. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, uh, School of Innovation is our, uh, you know, competency building center, uh, which focuses on, uh, you know, the digital transformative skills and the kind of new way of wave of uh, skills, you know, and this is based out of venture-based learning. And... Uh, you know, establishing the time competency in, across all the participants, across all the programs. So digital product design, SaaS user experience design, social apps design, AI bots design, uh, and digital marketing. Uh, there's a new certification uh, for even architecting digital transformation. Uh, and there are multiple workshops which uh, 
are <clears throat> part of this uh, you know, school of innovations offerings, uh, dissecting digital business, weaving digital experiences and all. And, and of course, for 13 to 18 years, primarily for the teenage, uh, we do have programs, uh, you know, in the pre-university leadership program, PAUD is one such program, uh, wherein we want to give uh, access to the high school, college students in terms of designing, uh, you know, for certain products, digital products and ventures. They start there and it ultimately, you know, develops the time competency and the leadership uh, aspects even before they get into the university level. So they will have real good clarity in terms of decision making skills, the leadership skills uh, at the personal, professional as well as, you know, at the social uh, level. And smart project summer camps are, you know, the short term uh, offerings, four to eight weeks, wherein they get a chance to build some prototypes and, uh, you know, at various scopes as such. So these are a few offerings from School of Innovation and we hope you browse through our uh, web portal and get in touch with us for, for any kind of interest and participation. And uh, there are scholarships, of course, uh, for the uh, eligible candidates. So please do uh, feel free to check our website www.twinq.com uh, for more details on all the program. So I think we pretty much had uh, uh, in all the questions and also if if we are good for now, Satya, I'll hand it over to you and we can uh, quickly close this session for today. And I personally thank everyone uh, for attending this session. And uh, I hope you derived some value out of this workshop information, as well as, you know, uh, out of our interactions, the quiz, or, you know, as well as the activity that was given uh, part of the uh, workshop. And I hope uh, we were able to meet your expectations for today. And definitely, you know, we can uh, give you more, uh, uh, you know, uh, skills, uh, help in terms of the skills and knowledge of, as well as, you know, in that terms of advisory. Uh, feel free to reach out to us, dxlabs at goingcube.com or school of innovation at goingcube.com or you know, to our website and other channels. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, over to you, Satya. Okay, thank, thank you, Srika. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. Hope every participant uh, uh, feels the same. And uh, as Srika said, uh, you could actually browse through our website, goingcube.com, for other free workshops that we have listed there. And uh, feel free to Write us at uh, inquire at the rate goingcube.com if you have any questions or any uh, if you like to know more information and as well as subscribe uh, to goingcube.com at our website and uh, and uh, let's call it a day today and thank you all and uh, have a good day thank you bye bye.